guys, welcome to SourceFed Nerd. I'm Steve Zaragoza, and I am here with three amazing gentlemen. It is such a pleasure to be in the same room with you guys. Uh, that was a high end yeah, intro. Really. Work us out. <laughs> it was jet lag. I'm I know from Australia. <laughs> do the intro again and go one louder. Oh, Are you shit. serious? Yeah, Dude, do it. that's do a it. challenge I'm ready to take. And we're going to pretend it, we just got off a plane. So ready? You know, wait, okay, so here we ready? go. Hey guys, welcome to SourceFed Nerd. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm here with three amazing dudes. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? That's great. All right. Yeah. I was nervous that I was gonna be another guy that was gonna be like, so what was it like writing the movie? No, I'm being one of those fresh, guys. Fresh as a daisy. Okay. Kind of like tomorrow afternoon we'll be sitting there going, you've, yeah. he's no Steve. You've set the bar pretty high, I reckon. Okay, well, I, I'm telling you it's all down here, down here, yeah, here because uh, I wanna start off with something very important. Very hard hitting topic. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Oh, don't um, bring that up. I know, I know, but we have to talk about. It. I feel like it's been long enough. It's time to talk about. It. <laughs> it's been like it's been 12, twelve years. years. Yeah, right? No way, man. No, no, no more. Isn't it still Wait, a fresh wound? It's been though? fourteen years. Has it been yes. fourteen years? I don't care to be honest. I mean, already. Done. Really? Are you done? So with JJ taking over now, it feels like we can wipe the slate clean and we'll start again. I think we can talk you know, about it though. I'm yeah, numb. I think it's good to talk about it. Yeah, we, it's, it is because we, like, we've started talking about Lady Di a bit more. Sure, so I think it's enough. Fourteen years. I think we should talk about. It. I think the healing should begin. Don't you feel like though it was the beginning of the end for like an overabundance of CGI? It's a beautiful tool, CG, but it should be used sparingly. Obviously, like yeah. anything, it's like you know, butter. It's like butter. As far as practical effects and visual effects work uh, goes in the world's end. You know, with this we sort of try to make a mix of makeup, uh, animatronics, and digital effects. Where you are changing the formula for every single shot, it keeps the audience uh, guessing, you know. So you, you, you do feel fooled, you think, I don't quite know how they did that because it's, it's so slickly integrated. There was one particular animatronic that I thought people are going to think it's CG because it was so good. Yeah. You can't win. You yeah, can't win. well that's the thing. Like when when does it get to a point where you're like, now I don't know. That's when I like it. That's yeah. when I like the CG because then it just then feels you like... It brings the joy of magic back. Yeah, right? exactly. The confusion of reality and what's artificiality. Let's have a look at a clip. <laughs> well, it's weird, isn't it? You come back and everything's sort of different. I suggest you get on your way. Welcome home, boys. You don't want to get too uh, spoilery with stuff. Yeah, it's difficult. You know, you you have to protect the secrets of, uh, of films these yeah. days because people are so keen to know. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, information is a lot easy, a lot more readily accessible these mm -hmm. days. So if you do want to know something, you can find out immediately. And our tendencies are to want to know. It's it's a little cowardly that we want to kind of find out before we go in because we want to anesthetize ourselves against the tension. But I think it's better not to. I think it's better to walk in there. The best viewing of any film really is to go in completely blind knowing nothing about it and be surprised. Man, I can't do it. Like, I, I, I just can't though because like, That's especially when you're a big like, <laughs> <laughs> I need to go home and cry now. <laughs> You're right, I am, but that's not the point here. The point is, is that I just, especially with your guys' movies too. Like, I just, I love them so much. I'm a big fan. I want to know what I'm getting into. But I have friends who don't even watch trailers, and then they go into the movie and they're like, "It's so amazing that I didn't see the trailer and I didn't know what the hell was gonna happen." But how do we do it? How do you do that? You have to be very doggedly. You know, you have to just avoid everything. I mean, you have to kind of be a hermit a little bit. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough though when you go to the movies and 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 you can't. If something comes on that you don't want to see the trailer, you have to sit there and go. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. And that annoys people. Well, let's talk about spoilers a little bit because Edgar, um, I know you're very careful with this film. And and I, when I went to see the screening, you, there was a lovely note from you that said, "Please, you know, be be cool about the spoilers and like you know let people be surprised by the surprises." And I totally love that. I think that's great. Some people really want the spoilers, which is crazy. They want to know everything about the movie before they go and they see it. They need to be protected. Those people. Those people are. I think those people need help. <laughs> you can't you can't really stop people from that. It's just a shame that they feel that need, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like reading the last page of a book when you start reading the book. It's it's just it's the self-defeating. If they want to do it, let them do it, but it's I'm not going to help them. Have you ever done that? Have you ever read the last page of a book? A Chinese book, yeah, but that's because that's when it starts. That's where it starts. Uh, <laughs> there it is. It's the same yeah. about Hebrew books as well. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they start too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's other way, isn't it? It sure is. Search. Uh, I think. I think. Um... <laughs> hey guys, welcome to SourceFed Nerd. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I am here with Nick Frost. Those other guys are all right. Too. Why don't you just do that? Like every it be Let's do like it every round, thirty seconds or something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anytime one of us looks like we're gonna fall asleep, because now, Bojo. Yeah. Bang! <laughs> I don't even remember where we are. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. 
Uh, I want you to come into our other interviews this weekend and do the same perfect. thing. Perfect. I'm gonna come in and so ah, three, two, welcome to the Swordsman Nerd, guys. I'm Steve Zaragoza. <laughs> Let's talk about World's End stuff for yes. Christ's sake, can we? Yes. So I enjoy the film immensely. This is the last of your uh, three flavors Cornetto trilogy. Does it? Is it bittersweet? Is it sad? We're basking in the satisfaction of having made good on a promise. Yeah. Because that's the thing is that sort of like it's it's funny to sort of it, it took a long time to kind of get this one together and it's been six years since hot, since hot first. So it's funny when the first question people are saying, another trilogy, second trilogy? <laughs> is it we just, feel, right now, even though we do want to work together, it feels very nice that we actually make good on our promise. We've got to do Ant-Man first, haven't we? Yeah, we've got to do Ant-Man. Oh, are you guys going to be in Ant-Man? Yeah. 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 Well, they're both yeah. playing, playing Ant-Man. the characters now <laughs> split together. Into two. True. You yeah. guys are both stuck together. Yeah. As we cast. formed There's two different characters. The Mighty Thorax. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Abdomen. 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 Also, it's not bittersweet for us doing this because we know we're going to work together again. It's yeah, not like we're Radcliffe, Watson, and Grint. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not the last time we're ever going to be a film with the three of us. We are going to do more, but it's, this is the end of that. Just before was that we, right? Was that the right yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just before I'm we go on, I'm Grint. Every time, so, oh, every you're time Grint. we go on stage, Radcliffe. Every Watson. time we go on stage somewhere, we put all our fists together oh, and we right, go, Q. Radcliffe, Watson, <laughs> Grint, go! Go! <laughs> go and see The World's End. Uh, if you go and see. Only want to see one apocalypse comedy this year. You, you probably won't go and see it. <laughs> but if you go and see more than one, this will be the best one you see. I wasn't aware there's another apocalypse comedy. That's yeah, it was not... called um, After Earth. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a small art house picture that Flick. went straight to DVD, didn't it? But if you've seen Sean and Hot Fuzz, you, you, your life, your wife won't be complete unless she sees this. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs>, Laughs, tears, beers, exploding heads. These two jerk offs. <laughs> August the 23rd, the world's end. <laughs> You'll love it, believe me. Take it from me, Emma Watson. Thanks for watching the interview, guys. There was actually a ton more footage in there because I was just geeking out. I was excited. I might have pissed my pants. But if you want to see the full interview, you can click on this annotation and you can see the whole thing. Just watch it, for God's sakes. I'll wait.